when I was 11 years old, we had a really, really tough Thanksgiving where there was no money and no food, and my mom was screaming at father about how he couldn't even take care of his own family, and it was horrible. And I have a younger brother and younger sister. I'm the oldest. So I was trying to keep them from hearing this conversation, and then a miracle happened. Bang on the door. I'm the oldest, and they're screaming, so I go answer the door. And I answer the door, and standing there is this giant man. It was this little boy, and he's holding this huge box of food. And beside him on the ground was a black pot with an uncooked turkey in it. And he said, is your father home? And I said, just one moment. <laughs> I was like, unbelievably euphoric. I thought, this is a gift from God. This is going to change it all. This is going to make my mom and dad happy. It's going to be unbelievable. So I go, and my father is screaming at my mother through a closed door to the bedroom door. And I said, Dad, Dad, there's a guy at the door. And he was going, well, you answer the door. I said, I did. He's got to see you. And I kind of teased. So I said, Dad, you got to come. So he said, fine. And he made one last yell at her, and he walks to the door. And I'm waiting there, just can't wait to see his face. And my dad opens the door, and this man's standing there with this big box of food. And my father did not get happy. He looked at this man, and he raised his voice to him, and he said, look, we don't take charity. And then he took the door to slam it in the man's face. But the man was a good-sized man. He put his foot there and smacked his foot and bounced back over. He said, sir, sir. He said, please take this. And my father said, we don't take charity. He went to slam it again. And this time the guy put his shoulder against it so he couldn't do it. And then my father's staring at him. It's like these two males starting to get in this intense mode. And one's just trying to give a gift, and I'm freaking. And then the guy said something that I'll never forget. And in the moments I wish he hadn't said. But he found a way to force my father. He sold this thing, and he looked at me. And then he looked at my dad and he said, don't make your family suffer because of your ego. Now my dad's level of energy increased, but he was also trapped. So he took the food, slammed it on our table, and slammed the door in the man's face and everything. And I, I didn't know what to do. Part of me wanted to cry. Part of me was crushed. And I watched my father storm off and went on back to stream with my mother. And I remember that day just thinking, you know, I don't understand. You gotta realize you can't lose anything. You can transform things, but you can't lose anything. Now you can try and pretend you've lost something. You can like be upset with somebody and they go, oh my god, I lost their love, or, or they lost mine, or I lost respect. How do you lose respect? You can't lose something that's already inside of you. Love is not something you have to go looking for when it's where you come from. You know, my mom was 5'1". I'm 6'7". <laughs> yeah, you know how she gave birth to me is mind-boggling. She loved the attention she got partying or dancing, but she would never go to the grocery store. I did that every day of my life. I went on my bicycle, did the grocery store, made the meal. She never came out of this room. We lived in a 1,200-square-foot house, and my forefathers all lived in the living room at different times. She was a very powerful and intense lady. But, you know, again, I, I don't, I'm not saying this to be positive. It's just really true. Everything in my life has come from all those things that are there, all the drives. You know, now I could have just beat myself up or felt sorry for myself, but fortunately I didn't do that. I remember sitting there in my 400 square foot bachelor apartment in Venice, California. All alone and crying. I remember feeling like my life didn't even matter. As if the events of the world were controlling me. I also remember the moment my life changed, the moment I finally said, I've had it. I know I'm much more than I'm demonstrating, mentally, emotionally, physically. I'm more than what my life is showing right now. I made a decision in that moment which was to alter my life forever. I decided to change virtually every aspect of my life. I decided I would never again settle for less than I could be. Who would have guessed that this decision would bring me to such an incredible moment now? I know I'll never forget the day that really hit me that I was truly living my dream. I was flying my jet helicopter from a business meeting in Los Angeles, traveling to Orange County on the way to one of my seminars. And as I flew over the city of Glendale, California, I suddenly recognized a large building. And I stopped the helicopter and hovered above. And as I looked down, I realized this is the building that I'd worked in as a janitor a mere 12 years ago. In those days, I've been concerned about whether my 1960 Volkswagen would hang together for the 30-minute trip to work. My life had been focused on how am I going to survive. I felt alone and I felt fearful. But that day, as I hovered there in the sky, I thought, what a difference a decade can make. I did have a dream back then, but at the time, it seemed like it would never be realized. Today, though, I've really come to believe that all my past failures, all my frustrations, were actually just laying the foundation for the understandings that have created the new level of living I now enjoy. Finally, we reached Irvine, California, and as I began to look below, I was a little disturbed. 
when I saw that the off ramp to my seminar was jammed with bumper to bumper traffic for more than a mile. I thought to myself, boy, I hope you know, whatever else is going on tonight gets started soon so that the people coming to my seminar can arrive on time. But as I started to send down to the helipad, I began to see a brand new picture. Thousands of people being held back by security just where I was about to land. Suddenly, I began to grasp the reality. The traffic jam had been caused by people coming to my event. When I walked into the arena from the landing pad, I was surrounded by hundreds of people who wanted to give me a hug or tell me how my work had positively impacted their lives. And as I looked out in the audience, I saw 5,000 smiling, cheering, loving faces. And in that moment, I realized I am living my dream. No matter how bad your life is, the first thing you should do is help somebody else who's worse off because it will put everything in perspective. I don't care how bad it is. You're missing a leg. You're, you've lost your job. The way out of that, strengthen your mind, read, feed your mind, but go help somebody else. I, I feed two million people a year because somebody fed my family when I was 11 years old and um, that drive just doesn't go away. Everybody wants to change but nobody wants to work out. You know, Everybody wants muscle but nobody wants to train. We don't realize that the process of training ourselves, the process of conditioning ourselves actually feels incredible once you get that initial momentum. You get to decide you're going to commit to mastery. The only thing that's going to make you happy, my friend, in this year or any other, is to step up.